In this video, I'm going to look at how to create a simulation template. That's not a particularly weighty subject in and of itself, so I'll look at a few other things you can do to provide information at the start and end of your simulations as well, using built-in functionality. So first thing to note, there's not really a separate object type of simulation template. For example, in the same way that if I have a book page, I have a subtype of book page template which identifies it as a template. You don't really have the same equivalent for simulations. All you have is an existing simulation with something in it or something defined for it that you want to use for a start point when you create other simulations. And that can be absolutely anything. If you notice when you go to create a simulation object, it gives you an option to select any simulation you like to use as a template. A simulation template is really just the one that you want to say should be used in most cases, but it really is just a simulation project. I could select any existing simulation I have in here if I wanted to. So that's the first thing to remember. It's not really a template. Now you may notice, depending on your setup, when you go to create a new object on the templates tab, there is in my case here, the standard simulation template is listed here as an available template. What makes it appear on this particular tab here is nothing more than this checkbox in the properties for this particular simulation project. Use as template is selected here, and there's a description in here which is the same exact description that appears when you look at that tile in the templates tab of the new objects dialog box. So that's the only thing that says, hey, I want to have this available for ease of access as a template. But again, it's not really a template object. So why would you want to have a simulation template? Typically, so you've got some information in there that you want to be in all of your simulations. That could be some information, for example, like boilerplate text that we have in here in our description or short description or other information in here. I've got placeholders where I expect the author to overtype this with the actual content. The other reason you might want to do it, and this is my standard simulation template that I use a lot, is to include some other information in here. For example, I've got a bubble in here that's the first thing I want the authors to populate. There could be other things. You could have, for example, um, documentation macros or things like that, or document properties is a common one. If that's used and you have certain document properties with certain names that you need them to populate, it's a good idea to put that into your simulation template so all authors have that with the names pre-filled in and don't have to remember what they are. So those kinds of things are why you might want to use a simulation template. I've got a few examples to show here of effectively simulations that I could use as a template. I've based them all off of creating a sales order because I want to show you it with some content in it, but it's really the template side of things that I want to look at. So here's my basic simulation that I've got. It's got two steps in it, it's something very simple because I want to move fast through this. And I'll play this through and then we'll see why you would typically want to have that start and end page. So I'm gonna just play this in demo mode. And what I see is it goes straight to the first screen of the application. I've got an introduction bubble here, but again, we're right into the simulation. Then it carries out these two steps. And when it does that, we're basically finished. At this point, I end and they just drop straight out again. There's no congratulations, you finished or anything like that. So let's look at a couple of options for making this a bit more user-friendly. The first one I'm going to look at is providing a simple start page and a stop page for the simulation. This is functionality that's built in. You don't need to use a template to get this. The options are under Tools, Settings, Playback Settings, and then I'm changing it just for this particular simulation, and I'm gonna do it just for practice mode. So I'm gonna use the project overrides here. But these settings are available in Trainer Global, and then by mode, and in this case, um, I've got the project override that I'm using for this demo. And under visual properties, you can see there are two options in here, show start page, show stop page. You can use either or both of those. In this example, I've selected both of these options. So let's look at what that does for us. If I play this back again, and I'm gonna go through it in practice mode so I can control the flow a bit better, preview this, and this is the start page. 
It's a pre-built thing. It just gives you this dialog box over the top here with some specific text in it, which is in the playback dictionary if you want to change it. But this text is the same for every single simulation that you have this activated for. You can't provide any simulation specific instructions in it. So this is the start page. So one word of warning here. I've got zoom to 100%. If you have zoom to fill, it will make this dialog box the full screen size, which can look fairly ugly because there's not much text in it and it just ends up being extra large. So watch out for that. So that's my start page. Go through here, I'm now into my simulation. I'll quickly run through these steps. I've only got a couple in there. And then at the end, this is my stop page. And again, I can customize this text in the playback dictionary, but it's very rudimentary text, and it's the same text for all simulations. One thing that is on here that's kind of helpful is there is a restart button. This lets the user start from the beginning all over again if they want to see it another time, and this is in all modes you can do that. So that's the start and stop page. Very easy to do if you just want to have some kind of generic introduction before you actually launch into the application screens. Now, the next option is also built in. You don't need to use templates to do it. And this is what it calls the intro page and end page. So in this simulation, I'm using some specific functionality called the intro page and the end page. They basically, again, bookend the simulation with something at the start and something at the end, but they're kind of maintained a little bit differently. First of all, I've got up at the top here in my start step, I have an intro page macro. That's what gives me this here, this black page with some graphics down the left-hand side and some information in here. The information in here is simulation specific. You can see over on the right-hand side here where I've got my property sheet that this is where I've provided that information. I've got a title, which is this thing here. That's the demonstration there. And I've got demo mode, practice mode, and test mode that I have them for. Concurrent mode and all those other modes will use the demo mode title. And then I, again, I've got a demo mode description, practice mode description, test mode description. And this is where I put in the text that I want to appear here. There are a couple of different styles that are provided by SAP, neither of which is particularly pretty, so I don't see a lot of use of these. This is the gold reflection style. There's another one with this weird name, and that looks like this. Again, not particularly nice looking, but let's go with the gold reflection for now. So this is my intro page. The nice thing about using an intro page here is it effectively lets me provide jump in points to the learners. So here you can see that I can say, if you want to start at the beginning, go to this step. If you just want to see this particular part of the simulation, you can click on that step. So I can provide these jump in points if they want to start from a particular point within this simulation. The way I provide those is by using intro page start link macros which pretty much just say, this is the text that I want to show and I want to link to this particular step within the simulation. Again, I only have two steps here because it's very simple. So, and then there's a description for it. So we have that information as well. Now, important to note that these must appear before your intro page macro. And you can put as many of those as you like. And you need to put at least one on there. Otherwise, the user doesn't know how to start because they'll just have a thing here that has a title, this block of text here, and then there's no start button or no anything else. So you do need at least one of those. So that is the intro page. Now, on the back end of things for closing out the simulation, there is no end page macro. What there is is on the actual simulation end macro there's a set of properties here and one of them is show end page and if you select that then you have some additional fields in here basically a similar thing you've got a title and a description that you can put in here so it's equivalent to what you saw in the intro page it's going to use the same style so whereas up here at the top, we have the gold reflection style selected, the end page here will also use that same style. There is no separate style that you can use here because you want to be consistent. So that's those. Again, that is the intro page at the top. And then on the simulation end macro, we're enabling the show end page. 
And these are where you would maybe put these into your simulation template if you use that and have all of these set up to start with. You might have some boilerplate text in here, but maybe these are things that you want to provide users with simulation specific information in there. For example, if they've failed or they've passed the test mode, do you want to explain something specific to them, tell them where to find other information, that kind of thing. So again, usually simulation specific information you can put in here, but these placeholders or at least enabling this and inserting the intro page you'd probably want to put in your template. So let's see what that's going to look like for us now. So let me play this back. I'll do it in demo mode because I have some information for demo mode in there. I'll just play it. And here's my intro page. I've got my title, my text here, and my links to wherever I want to go. And here I'm just going to start at the beginning. And then I'm into my simulation as before, run through those steps fairly quickly. And then this is the end page. Again, I have the text in here that I want to have in here. I could have a title as well if I wanted to. And I've got the restart button. So I can restart it if I want to. So that's that option. So that's as far as a nice, easy, inbuilt options go that you have available to you. If, um, whether you put those into a template or not is up to you, but that's fairly standard stuff. Now, what I typically see done is providing prettier pages for the start and the end. And usually the way we can do that, there's actually two options. Um, the primary option is to use book pages there. So that's the option I have in this simulation. And if I show you that, what I have at the start here, after my start step, which has got to have just the first macro in it, after that first start step, I've got in here effectively a book page. This has been inserted via insert page macro book page. And then that gives me a set of properties. And one of those is I select which book page I want to use. Now that book page has to exist already. If I go back to my library, I can see here that I've got a book page for my simulation start, which looks like this and one for my simulation end, which looks like that. So that's what I have set up already. And then in here, I'm just selecting that book page. And then at the end, I've got another book page in here as well. So I've got my book page in here and I've got a bubble displayed over the top of it. This again is my simulation specific information. Now this is an important point. The book page will typically be displayed for as long as you tell it to be displayed before it goes and displays any content that's actually within the simulation. So what I have here, and we'll see this when I play it back in a second, is it's going to display this book page for this duration, which I've got set to one second. You cannot set it anything lower than one second. And then after that one second, it's then going to display this bubble over the top of it. And this is a fault I find in this. I don't really like this too much because you've got to have that book page displayed before it even displays any simulation specific information. Now, what you can do on that book page is you can put a placeholder on the book page that pulls in, for example, the short description or the description or any other property from the simulation. So that way you can provide simulation specific content on the book page, even though it's just a single standard book page that you've got in there. The advantage of using book pages though, is if this changes, for example, I change my corporate color scheme and I no longer have it as this yellow, I want to use something else. The only place I really need to change that is in this book page. And then automatically, every simulation that uses this book page will be updated to reflect those new changes that I've put into my book page that I'm using within my simulation template. So let's play this back and see how it looks. Again, I'll just run it back in demo mode. So here's my book page. One second later, it displays this, and then it will carry on as normal after that. So kind of effective, works reasonably well. I personally don't like that one second break. I find it a bit too distracting, like there. Users are gonna think, well, did I miss something? What happened there? Is it taking too long to load? That kind of thing. So that brings me to my last option. This is the method that I typically use. And this is actually to use images instead of book pages because I can then provide my bubbles over the top of that. 
Now, it's important to understand, I've got an image in here. You can see I'm using the same image here. This is just an image, it's not a book page. It happens to be an image that is exactly the same size as my standard training simulations, but it is just an image. Now, the important thing with an image is that images are effectively page macros. If I go to insert, insert page macro, that's where I will find my image macro. It's a page macro, which means that it's displayed over the top of the current screen. Okay, and that's the important thing here. You've got to have a screen to display that image on. So what I have to have is effectively a blank screen in here. It's a screen macro. I just copied one from somewhere else in the simulation, deleted its content, literally went into the external editor, deleted everything so that it's completely blank. Doesn't really need to be because I'm gonna overlay my image on the top of that, but I don't want anything to be confusing to the authors. So I have a blank page and then I have my image that's displayed over the top of this. And the good thing about this is I can put my bubbles on the top of that and they will be displayed effectively at the same time as the image is. So it all looks nice and seamless. I've got exactly the same thing at the end again. I've got an empty screenshot. I've got my image over the top of it. And then I've got a bubble that's got the simulation specific content in it. So if I play this one back, First thing I see is that image and it's got my bubble on it straight away. And then it will progress through the simulation as before. Do this initial step, the one step that we've got in this simulation. And then I've got my end there. And then right at the end, immediately I've got my image and I've got my bubble over the top of it as well. So this is a method that I like. And again, it is handy in that if my corporate branding changes, the only thing I need to change is this image. This I've actually pulled from my um, work area. I've got this image in my toolbox. So if I update things, I just update that one image. And again, it will automatically apply to every single simulation that was built using this template that happens to have this structure in it. To summarize, there are a few different options for getting those start and end pages in your simulation. And typically you would put those into what's effectively an empty simulation project. For example, in here, if I stripped out these two steps here, now all I have in here is a start and end in here. And then I've got my start page, my end page in here, and a bit of information for the boilerplate that they can drop some text into. This now, I can save this, call it a template, and now my authors can select this to use as a template. It will automatically have this information in it. And they can just select this start macro, start recording, and they've got all of this content in it. So that is as far as we need to go with simulation templates. I hope you found that useful. Remember that you do have these different options from using the start page and stop page in the settings, having the intro and end page that you can use, having book pages that you can use, or using images overlaid on screenshots that you can use. Hope you found that useful. Please subscribe if you do. More videos to follow. Thank you.